Today's recipe calls for fondant. I'm going to show you how to make cake topper decoration thingy majigs. We're going to make these in the shape of donuts as a bride and groom. This is a request from my older brother and his wife to be. This video should be fairly easy and a lot of fun. So with that said, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is start on the base of our bride and groom donuts. We're using four ounces of fondant for the base. These end up making pretty large donuts. So if you wanted something smaller, you can easily cut this in half and use two ounces if you choose. All we're trying to do is flatten it out to make basically a hockey puck. So what you're going to do is start in the center and press on the center of the fondant and slowly turn it in your hand to flatten it out. Once it starts to take a hockey puck shape, you're going to use your other hand and use your fingies to keep that circle and the shape of a hockey puck. So just flattening from the center and shaping on the outsides. We're going for about a two inch thickness on our fondant hockey puck should look roughly something like this. I found it easiest to use saran wrap because when you lay your fondant down, you can pull up the saran wrap to make it a lot easier to pick up your fondant hockey puck instead of trying to pick it up and squishing the fondant. The color I'm using is a peach color. I was looking for more of a tan color, but this is all I could find at the time and it came out just fine. You can use a red to make a red velvet donut or use a mix of blue and purple to make a blueberry donut or even use a dark brown to make a chocolate donut. It's really up to you and what kind of donut you're looking to make. Do your best to make it flat and as even as possible all the way around. Fondant is made up of fat and sugar. The more that you agitate and work with your fondant, the easier it is to work with. It'll absorb your body heat, making it more pliable and easier to shape into whatever your heart desires. So if your fondant is really stiff and tough in the beginning, just keep working it in your hands and eventually it'll become more loose and easier to work with. Now that you have your second hockey puck of fondant made, you can take your saran wrap and throw it over the first one so you can lay the second piece of fondant right over the top. This will prevent them from sticking together and this will ensure that you get the exact same shape and size for both of your pieces of fondant. Now that we've made our little fondant patties and we've made them as perfect as we possibly could, we'll set those aside so we can move on to the next step. The next thing we're going to do is punch a hole right in the center of our fondant hockey puck. This will give us the look, the shape, and the fill of an actual donut. You're going to take a medium sized ball fondant tool and slowly work it in a circular motion with light pressure to start to punch through the fondant to make our hole for the donut. You don't want to shove it through and use a lot of pressure. This will make the fondant stick to the tool and you won't get a nice clean looking donut hole. I also found that if you lightly twist the fondant tool in your fingers, this will help work through the fondant as well. Keep working your tool until you punch all the way through your fondant. Once you've pushed all the way through, pick it up and punch through completely on the other side using the circular motion again to work the tool through the fondant. Once you punch completely through your fondant hockey puck, you'll notice there's a small thin layer of fondant skin. All you need to do is take your fondant ball tool and smooth it out, lightly pressing in that fondant skin straight into the large hockey puck of fondant. Keep smoothing out your fondant until you have a nice, smooth, even layer. I found the medium sized ball tool was the perfect size to punch the center out of our fondant hockey puck. If you want something larger, you can easily use the larger ball tool for this, or you can keep working your tool to make the center hole of your donut larger. It's really up to you. Now that you've punched out the center hole of your donuts, go back through and smooth out any imperfections that you possibly made when making your center hole for your donuts. Next, we're gonna make the glaze for our donuts. So grab the perfect cutting apparatus that fits the size and shape of your donuts. This will help ensure that we cut the exact size and shape of fondant to make our glaze for our donuts. I bought the fondant ball tools, but totally forgot to grab the cookie cutter tools for this. Man, adulting's really hard. Now we're gonna start on the glaze for our donuts. The color scheme of their wedding is purple and gray, so we're gonna start on the purple glaze first. You're gonna mess around with it in your hands to warm it up to make it a lot more pliable and easier to work with. Once it's nice and pliable, flatten it out into a nice fondant disc. This will make it a lot easier to roll out with the rolling pin. Now that you have a fondant disc, you're going to start rolling it out with your rolling pin. You're going to roll one side 10 or 12 times and then flip it over and roll that side 10 or 12 times. You're periodically going to turn your fondant sideways and then roll it out. Doing so will help keep a nice circular shape, making it easier for our cutting apparatus to fit inside so we can get the cut that we desire. 
You're going to apply equal pressure throughout when rolling out your fondant. This will ensure that we get a nice even layer. You're going to roll this out to about a quarter inch thickness. I used one and a half ounces of purple fondant to make our glaze. This ends up being too much, but it's easier to have too much than not enough. I used the fondant that came in the silver solophane packing that you can buy at a craft store. I found this to be the best and easiest to work with. I'm not a pro when it comes to fondant, so there might be something better out there, but the stuff that you can buy at the craft store will work just fine. A little pro tip for you, the thinner that you roll out your fondant, the faster it'll dry. If you pretend to be an adult like I do and don't have all the exact tools for this job, like a ring mold or a circular cookie cutter, you can use anything that has a nice thin width lip on it, like a glass or Tupperware in my case. The thinner, the better. You want something thin because it'll give you a nice, clean, even cut through our fondant. Grab your cutting apparatus and place it in the center of your fondant and apply hard, equal pressure to cut all the way through the fondant. You want to push until your cutting apparatus hits the work surface once it hits it, peel away the excess fondant. You want to push through your fondant, don't twist it. Twisting it will leave you with jagged edges and you should end up with something like this. Now that you've made your glaze, grab your donuts, a pastry brush, and a little bit of water. Get a small amount of water on your pastry brush and paint one side of your glaze with water. You don't want to use too much water. This will act as the glue to adhere our glaze to our donuts. Once you have one side of your fondant, glaze painted, you're going to lay it right on top of your donuts. Lightly press on it with your fingies to help it adhere to your donut. Then you're going to grab your fondant tool to punch out the center of your donut glaze so we get that nice look and feel of a donut. Once you press out the center, you'll start to see air bubbles pop up in your glaze. And use your little fingies to push those air bubbles out to the sides to release that air. You don't want to use a toothpick for this. This will create a small hole that you can't really get rid of. So smooth out your glaze until there's no air bubbles and smooth out the center of your donut hole with your fondant tool. It should end up looking something like this. Now we're going to start working on the other fondant glaze for our other donut. This stuff is a bit stickier than the other stuff was. If your fondant is sticky at all, lightly dust your work surface with some cornstarch and dust each side of your fondant disc with a little bit of cornstarch. This will help prevent it from sticking to your work surface or your rolling pin. This is basically like the same method you would use for making dough. If it's too sticky, you would dust it with some flour, but instead we'll dust it with some cornstarch. Then like the same method that we did for our purple glaze, roll it out thin with a rolling pin. And don't worry about the cornstarch changing the color of your fondant. It didn't, in my case, it just absorbs the cornstarch and it doesn't leave any marks or anything behind. All you need to do is dust it off a little bit with a towel and it'll be just fine. The gray fondant that I bought came in a little plastic Tupperware jar, like if it were one of those little plastic Play-Doh things. The top of it was really crusty and dry and not usable. The bottom was just fine. So that's why I recommend using the fondant that comes in the silver sulfane wrapper. Maybe just a one-off thing. I got the short end of the stick, but just a heads up when you go to buy some fondant. Then again, we're gonna cut out our perfect circle for our glaze. Once you get your fondant cut out, I recommend grabbing a dry towel and cleaning up any of the excess cornstarch that was left behind. This will make your work surface a lot easier to work on. And if you accidentally got some water on that cornstarch, then it's gonna be a mess and make your work surface a lot harder to work on. Now that we got our glaze made for our other donut, we're gonna use the same exact method like we did for our first one, painting one side and adhering it to our donut. I forgot to mention on the first one, you're going to push your tool completely through your fondant glaze until your tool comes through on the other side. Once it does, you're going to smooth out your fondant just like we did at the beginning until you get a nice even smooth layer. Like I mentioned before, their wedding colors are purple and gray, but there's so many different colors of fondant out there that you can come up with any color combination that you need or want. They even make bright neon fondant colors, which is really cool. And you can make any fondant figures that you need for your occasion, like two brides, two grooms, or just two fondant figures to go on top of a wedding cake. There's so many opportunities with this stuff. Just have a lot of fun making them. And you can even make like a little bow tie for the groom or a little bouquet of flowers for the bride. Or you can make some sprinkles to throw on top or take a different color of fondant to make it look like it's been drizzled with some other goodness. There's so many different opportunities with this. Just have a lot of fun with it 
and use a ton of creativity to do it. There's definitely no right or wrong way of doing these. And here's a pro tip to help everything dry a lot quicker. You can use a blow dryer to do this. If you're going to use the blow dryer method like this, ensure that you set your blow dryer to the cool setting. It doesn't matter if it's on high or low, you just want to ensure that it's on the cool setting. If you use the hot setting on your blow dryer, it'll in turn start to melt the sugars and you'll end up with a giant mess and have to start all over again. In this step, we're just trying to dry the glaze to ensure that it adheres to the donut itself. We're not trying to completely dry the entire donut. That would take way too long and your electric bill would be out of control and it would not be good. So just dry it enough until your glaze adheres to your donut. About two to three minutes, it shouldn't take very long. Next, we're going to start making the top hat for our groom. We're going to use the same exact methods like we did before, making a flat disc of fondant, then rolling it out with our rolling pin. We're going to roll it out to a quarter inch thickness again. This will be the brim for our top hat. Now that you have your black fondant rolled out, you're going to grab a small cookie cutter for this. Of course, I don't have one, so I'm going to use a measuring teaspoon for this and a paring knife. I'm going to use the paring knife to trace around the teaspoon to get the brim of our hat. The fondant is super easy to cut through so you don't have to apply a lot of pressure. Just trace around your measuring spoon. This isn't the best method but it does work. Then peel away any of the excess fondant away. The only downside of using this is the handle gets in the way. You'll see once you get the fondant out of your teaspoon. Now we have a little bit of excess on one side and all I did was grab the measuring spoon again and fit it to the brim of our hat and cut away the excess fondant that we didn't need. And the fondant ends up getting stuck in there, but all you have to do is shake it out and it should be just fine. Now you should end up with something sort of like this. It's pretty crude, but it works. Now with the excess fondant, start making the top of your top hat. I didn't do that in this step. I make something that looks more like a fedora or something that the Amish would wear. Don't worry, I fix it in the end. Imagine that I'm making that right now. All you're gonna do is take your fondant and roll it out to make it a cylinder shape, almost like you're making a worm or a snake with your fondant, rolling it on your work surface. You want something that's nice and even in shape, that's the same thickness from the top to the bottom. You can make it as tall as you wish. Like everything else, we're gonna glue the two pieces together with a little bit of water. So grab a small dab of water and put it on the brim of your top hat and put a little bit of water on one side of the cylinder of the hat and lightly push the two pieces together to ensure that they adhere together to make one piece. Then we're going to grab the blow dryer to speed up the drying process. You can do this for about two to three minutes. Next, we're going to start working on the veil for the bride. I used a pearl white fondant for this. The pearl white just means it has a little bit of sparkles in it to make it look extra pretty or whatever, something like that. All you're going to do is take your fondant and roll it out on your work surface to make an even sized worm shape. You want it to be about a quarter inch thick. These will be the little pearls that'll go on top of our veil for the bride. Now that you have your little fondant worm and everything is the same exact size and shape, grab a paring knife and start cutting off little nuggets of fondant. You can make as many little nuggets of fondant to go on top of your veil as your heart desires. I went with about five. Once you have the little nuggets, roll them in your fingers to make little balls. You want to ensure that everything is the same exact size. If one's too small, all you have to do is start over again and cut another little nugget off the giant roll of fondant. Once you have the little balls made, take your index finger and roll the little balls on your work surface to make it a nice, even sphere. They don't have to be perfect, but do your best. Then I found it easiest to ensure that everything is the same size by lining them up and checking them out. I had a few that were a bit small, so I had to redo them. Now that you have the pearls that are made for the top of the veil, you're going to grab another piece of the pearl white fondant and roll it out to make the tail of the veil, I think it's called. I don't really know. But you're going to use the same exact methods like we did before when rolling out your fondant. You're going to make this about a quarter inch thick like everything else as well. You can make this as short or as long as you wish. There's really no right or wrong way of making this. Now that you have the tail of the veil made, we're going to glue the pearls to the top. So grab a little bit of water and brush the top of the veil tail and then place your little pearls right on top. Then I went a little bit crazy and cut it to make a different style shape. You can leave it a perfect square or you can cut it to make a design if you wish. 
I wanted to give the veil some texture and a 3D look, so I took my paring knife and got underneath the fondant to help lift it up so that I could crease the fondant onto itself. This gives the veil some waves and some texture and a three-dimensional look. I think it came out really cool. You can totally skip this step. It's really up to you. It's kind of cool because the bottom looks all scrunched up like an actual veil would. Then I found the best method to dry the veil is to set it on top of our rolling pin so that it takes that natural curve. So when we go to glue it on top of the bride, it already has that nice curve to it. Then we're going to grab our hair dryer and blow on it with some cool air to quicken the drying process. Next, we're going to start making the eyes for our bride and groom cake toppers. Take a little piece of fondant. And I use the stainless steel straw to roll this stuff out. You're going to roll it out super thin like we did with everything else and using the same exact methods, just using a smaller rolling pin is all. Now that you have your fondant rolled out, you're going to take your stainless steel straw and start punching out little eyes. And you're going to take a smaller straw that fits inside of your stainless steel straw to help get that fondant completely out of the straw. So make all four of your eyes. They do make pre-made candy eyeballs that you could use. It would work just great, but this is more cost effective because we already have the fondant. And also this is the same green straw that we used in our St. Patty's drink video. Now we'll start adding the pupils to our eyeballs. I used permanent marker. It was a whole lot easier. Or if you have any leftover black fondant, you can also punch out little black circles to add to these. But using a permanent marker was a whole lot easier and it came out just as great. Now that we have the eyes made, we're going to add a little pop of color to our top hat. So we're going to take some purple fondant and roll it out and use the same exact methods like we did with everything else. Now that we have our fondant all rolled out for our top hat, we're going to square off our fondant piece. You want to cut off the bottom and both sides of our fondant to make a square. You want to make the bottom as even as possible. Then we're going to cut about a 1 8 inch ribbon of fondant to go on the bottom of our top hat. Once you get the ribbon cut, discard any excess fondant, put it to the side. Once you have your ribbon made, you're going to peel it off of your work surface with your paring knife and check to see how much excess fondant that we have. If you have any excess fondant, Go ahead and crease it so you know where to cut and we'll cut it like so. Once that it's cut, we're going to dab one side with a very small amount of water so we can glue it to our top hat. And it helps to use a paring knife to pick up stuff that's this small. Once you have it, you're going to adhere it to the bottom of your top hat close to the brim. And you're going to crease the two ends together as best as possible. It should look something like this. And of course, grab the blow dryer to speed up the drying process. I let my donuts dry overnight and the glaze on one of them cracked. It, this may or may not happen to you. If it does, all you have to do is repeat the same exact process that we did before when we made our glaze and glue it straight to the top. Now that everything's nice and dry, we're going to glue on our little peepers, also known as our eyeballs. I used a toothpick for this. You're going to get a small amount of water on the tip of your toothpick and transfer it over to your donut and place the water right on your donut. Then you're going to grab a paring knife to grab the eyeball. Place the eyeball right on that small amount of water. Then use your fingy to tap on the eyeball to ensure that the eyeball adheres to your donut. You're going to use the same exact method for both sets of eyes on both of your donuts to ensure that your donuts look at you like they're little creepers. I put the sets of eyes towards the top of the donut. You can put the eyes on the sides or really wherever you want. You can play around with it to see where you want them before you glue it down. You can also add eyelashes to the, both of them or eyebrows to the groom and some eyelashes to the bride. So you should end up with something that looks like this. Now we're almost done making our bride and groom. All we need to do next is to glue on the top hat and the veil to our little donuts. So like everything else, put a little dab of water on the bottom of our top hat so that it sticks to the groom. There's not a lot of surface for the hat to stay on top of the donut, I found. So I used a toothpick and shoved it through the top hat into our donut. That helped make it stay on just a little bit better. Then grab a little dab of water and put it on the veil so we can glue it to our bride. And stick it right on get it as centered as possible mine is a little bit off but yeah it'll be all right then grab your blow dryer to quicken the drying process 
I left my donuts like this to dry for a few hours so that when they're completely dry, they're able to stand up on their own. You can also throw a popsicle stick on the bottom of them for the fondant completely dries so that you're able to stick them into a cake or donuts or whatever you choose. These took a few days to dry. It makes sense because they're so thick in width. I'll leave a link in the description for an article on some tips and tricks on how to work with fondant to make it dry quicker. So if you're a novice like me, it's really helpful. All right, our little fondant donuts are finally done. Let's check them out. We're not gonna taste these because it's pure sugar and it has permanent marker on there and I've never tasted it and I'm not gonna taste it today. So let's check out our bride. The veil on it came out really cool. Then there's the waves in the back of it to give it some texture. Looks really good. Let's check out the groom. And that little ring of color around the top hat gives it a nice little pop of color, makes it look really cool. Overall, these things came out really great. All right, that's it for today's video. This is a two day event. We had to wait so long because we needed the fondant to dry so we can put it all together. So my brother's really lucky that I still like him, even though he beat me up all the time when we were kids, it still hurts. I've never worked with fondant before, so this was a lot of fun to try something new and different. If you've never worked with it before, I recommend that you give it a shot. It's really easy and it's really forgiving. It reminds me a lot like Play-Doh. It just tastes a whole lot better. So if you mess up, all you have to do is put it back together and retry whatever you were making. So I definitely recommend giving it a shot. And if you enjoyed today's video, give it a like and also find me on Instagram at TaylorMakes92. I have a bunch of fondant left over. I'm gonna see what else I can make, maybe some snakes or some worms with it because that seems a whole lot easier. So with that said, we'll see you on the next one. Today's recipe calls for fondant. I'm gonna show you how to make a cake decoration type thingy, cake topper decoration thing. All right, our donuts are finally done. We're not gonna taste these because it's pure sugar and there's permanent marker on there. Even though my brother said you could probably eat it, I'm not going to. So let's just check them out. All right, that's it for today's video. I gotta turn the light on them. That's better. All right, our bride and groom are finally done. Our wedding decor decorations. All right, that's it for today's video. My brother is really lucky that I forgave him for all those times he's beat me up because this took two days, so he's lucky. He came out. Alright, so I noticed two things when I was editing this video. The first thing is, I said the word fondant a lot when I was doing this voiceover. All that means is you can easily turn this video into a drinking game. So every time I say the word fondant, take a sip of a drink. Maybe one of the cocktails from my cocktail recipe video, or some water, or a drink of your choice. You're not gonna die of thirst, trust me. And secondly, I never congratulated the two lovebirds. <laughs> I mean, congratulations to my brother Tyson and his wife also known as his better half, also known as my sister-in-law, also known as Haley. Congratulations to the both of you. I love you guys. And Ty, just because you're married now doesn't mean you don't suck, and also, mom doesn't love you, okay? Bye.